Good morning, and welcome to St. Elizabeth. Today we celebrate the 14th Sunday in Ordinary Time. Our presider is our pastor, Father Roger. His intentions are Robert Del Calo and Mary Petuska. Please join in singing our opening hymn, number 207, Praise the Lord, number 207. Good morning, everyone. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. And with your spirit. My brothers and sisters, let us acknowledge our sins and so prepare ourselves to celebrate the sacred mysteries. You were sent to heal the contrite of heart. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. You came to call sinners. Christ, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. You are seated at the right hand of the Father to intercede for us. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. And may Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us of our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Amen. Amen. And on the inside cover of the music book is the Gloria, which we recite during these summer months. Glory to God in the highest, and on earth peace to people of goodwill. We praise you, we bless you, we adore you, we glorify you. We give you thanks for your great glory. Lord God, heavenly King, O God, almighty Father, Lord Jesus Christ, only begotten Son, Lord God, Lamb of God, Son of the Father, you take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. You are away the sins of the world, receive our prayer. You are seated at the right hand of the Father, have mercy on us. For you alone are the Holy One, you alone are the Lord, you alone are the Most High, Jesus Christ, with the Holy Spirit, in the glory of God the Father. Amen. Let us pray. O God, who in the abasement of your Son have raised up a fallen world, fill your faithful with holy joy. For on those you have rescued from slavery to sin, you bestow eternal gladness. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, God, forever and ever. Amen. A reading from the prophet Zarkar. Thus says the Lord, Rejoice heartily, O daughter Zion. Shaft for joy, O daughter Jerusalem. See, your 
your king shall come to you. A just savior is he, meek and riding on an ass, on a colt, the fowl of an ass. He shall banish the chariot from Ephraim and the horse from Jerusalem. The warrior of Baal shall be banished and he shall proclaim peace to the nations. His dominion shall be from sea to sea and from the river to the ends of the earth. The word of the Lord. A reading from the letter of St. Paul to the Romans. Brothers and sisters, you are not the flesh, or the contrary, you are in the spirit. If only the spirit of God dwells in you, whoever does not have the spirit of Christ does not belong to him. If the spirit of the one who raised Jesus from the death dead dwells in you, the one who raises Christ from the dead 
will give life to your mortal bodies also through his spirit that dwells in you. Consequently, brothers and sisters, we are not debtors to the flesh, to live according to the flesh. For if you live according to the flesh, you will die. But if the spirit you put to death, the deeds of the body, you will live. The word of the Lord. God be in your heart and on your lips that you might worthily proclaim the Holy Gospel. Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Amen. Lord be with you. Your spirit. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Matthew. Glory to you, O Lord. At that time, Jesus exclaimed, I give praise to you, Father, Lord of heaven and earth, for although you have hidden these things from the wise and the learned, you have revealed them to little ones. Yes, Father, such has been your gracious will. All things have been handed over to me by my Father. No one knows the Son except the Father, and no one knows the Father except the Son, and anyone to whom the Son wishes to reveal him. Come to me, all you who labor and are are burdened, and I will give you rest. Take my yoke upon you and learn from me, for I am meek and humble of heart, and you will find rest for yourselves, for my yoke is easy and my burden light. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. Again, good morning to everyone. Good morning. It is good to see all of you here, and even some young people that are in the church today. We appreciate that very much. There is a a family in the back who have homeschooled their children, their daughters over many years, and have made a grand donation of books that are in mint condition that can be used for summer exercises for your students and for your children. There is math and science and art and history. And please, after Mass, to the left side of the vestibule, take an opportunity to stop by and take any or all those books that you would like so that your students would have some things to do during the summer. And we appreciate that gift very, very much. We know that it is summertime, so we're off from school officially. But keep in mind St. Elizabeth's School pre-K-3 through 12th grade. If you're looking to move or shift or things like that, we have a magnificent school here. We'd be honored to educate your children and to bring them up into that Benedictine tradition. And one of the traditions of St. Benedict, an order founded in the four and five hundreds, is to be hospitable. That is one of the hallmarks of Benedictine spirituality and of our school and of our parish 
to be welcoming to all. And I am going to welcome a couple officially to our church because there's an interesting thing going on between people and technology as we sit here in our church. So I know a gentleman named Dan for many years, a member of the Ancient Order of Hibernians, and his son, he is here, his son Dan is here. Dan is in the US military, and he was stationed in Europe, and it just so happened that he was on a vacation in Vienna. He met a beautiful young woman from Germany in Vienna as well. What a magnificent country to fall in love is Austria and, and the city of Vienna. And so they're here today. I just want to welcome them officially. They're going to baptize their baby here on October 7th, and we'll be welcoming many people from Germany that are here. And um, they met Ben, who is one of our parishioners with his wife, Pat, longtime member of um, St. E's, and from Germany also, so you already have a friend. Now the magic of technology is they met with me about the baptism of their baby and the light bulb went off. Technology is a miracle in the Catholic Church because our two teenagers, Noah and Michael, are live streaming this mass as we do every 10 o'clock mass, but guess who's watching? who's watching is Blanca's family in Germany. They're praying this mass with us, seeing the beautiful church in which they will see in October. So gentlemen, have you moved the camera? If Blanca and Dan would please stand. We'd like to welcome your whole German family to this mass, but can we welcome them to our church today? You are most welcome to be here, thank you. And as all sacraments are public events, never private events, if you want to come to their baptism, you are more than welcome to come to church October 7th at noon to witness their baptism. Now, as we sit in this church, one of the things that our students learn and one of the most important subjects that a student can learn in school is science. Science helps us to see the beauty and dignity of God's creation and use our intellect to unlock all the mysteries of the universe. Science is of utmost importance in someone's education. And one of the things we learn in science is something about air and temperature. Cold air tends to fall, correct? Hot air tends to rise. It doesn't tend to, it does. <laughs> Cold air goes down, hot air goes up. So if you think you're hot way down there, do you realize what I'm feeling way up here? Where Chris and Ken and I are is 10 degrees hotter than it is where you are. So if anybody wants to come up here and fan me like you're all fanning yourselves, I would greatly appreciate that. And if you go up there in that vault, you could fry a turkey and have it ready for dinner this evening. But it's our spiritual home. This is where we live. This is where we worship. If your air conditioner breaks down, you don't leave your home, just figure out how to deal with it. And we figured out how to deal with it for 75 years and we're doing darn good. And so with the miracle of technology, for all who are watching, don't let the heat keep you away if it's medically okay for you to do that. Come to church. We're all open and we're here together. I did the four o'clock mass in 39 minutes. I did the 7.30 mass in 35 minutes. So we're going to try to beat that record if I can get moving to the homily, okay? Just going to talk about the first reading that Chris read for us. It's a reading from a prophet. His name was Zechariah. There were prophets way back then. There are obviously prophets in our world today. What do prophets do? They call us to reflect on our lives and our relationship with God and each other. They call us to repent, to know that we are sinful and that we need God's mercy to turn away from our sin, 
to get back on the mark and the road that God has called us to and to do works of charity. The prophets do all of that. And prophets also do one more thing that the prophet Zechariah told us to do today in the reading. The prophet said to rejoice and to rejoice heartily, he said, and to shout for joy, God's goodness in our life. No matter the struggle, no matter the heat of the day, a person who follows a prophet should be rejoicing, should be shouting for joy to the world of the goodness and mercy of God. Not a frivolous joy should we have, but one that is deep down, coming from our hearts, our soul, our very being. And why would that joy be there? Because the prophet said, a just savior have we. A just savior was proclaimed to our Jewish brothers and sisters and is proclaimed to us. A just and merciful God for all and a just and merciful savior that we have in our Lord Jesus. And the prophet goes on to say that this just savior is meek and this just savior is humble. The world cannot be taken by power. Satan cannot be crushed by power. It's that gentleness and meekness that the savior has and that we should have towards one another. For what is going to control or take over the world or to enhance the world and to truly fight the evil that is in the world, we know that that is love. It is not power, it is love that will bring what we need to this world. The love that Jesus has come to teach us about and to bring to us. And I say that because the prophet Zechariah said in the end of the reading today, the Savior shall proclaim peace to the nations. The Savior shall proclaim peace. Proclaiming it does not make it happen because we know there was no peace in the prophet Zechariah's day, nor is there peace in our world today. The nations of the world are not at peace because there's religion in the world. They're still antagonistic one to the other, as well as our people and individuals. Remember Jesus said, I did not come to bring peace to the world as you think of peace. Jesus came to bring peace in another way. It's not Jesus's job to bring peace between nations. It's not his job, that's not why he came. Jesus came to bring peace to the human heart. That's whom Jesus is speaking to not to corporations, not to institutions. He is battling evil one heart at a time. And that's your heart and my heart. You know that old Franciscan song, let there be peace on earth and let it begin with whom? With me. If there's not peace in the human heart, there will never be peace in the world nor peace between nations or even families or even with oneself. Peace begins with the human heart. That is whom Jesus is speaking to, you and us today. We are called to be peacemakers, absolutely. We're baptized, we're christened, we are another Christ in the world by our very baptism. And so the Beatitudes that Matthew says later on in his gospel, from the gospel that we read today, he says in the Beatitude is, blessed are the peacemakers. Blessed are those who sow peace in the world. For what is their title? Who are the peacemakers, the Beatitudes say? The peacemakers are referred to in sacred scripture as the children of God. Bring peace to our own lives individually, our families, our parish, our country, and the world. 
It's not about us, it's about everyone. Let us be children of God. Let us be peacemakers. Let Jesus change our hearts and bring the peace that he wants to give to each and every one of us. And now let us stand and in this time of summer we recite the Apostles' Creed which can be found on page 10 in your music book. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit and was born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended into hell. On the third day, he rose again from the dead. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father Almighty. From there, he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and life everlasting. Amen. And let us offer these prayers to our God. That the members of the church be filled with the spirit and recommit themselves as good stewards, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. That the leaders of and people of this great country provide adequate care for those injured in its service, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. That all who are weary from the burdens of daily life find support and solace in the love of Jesus, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. That all who gather at this table find in their strength to meet every difficulty, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. That this community might be a welcoming place for those discerning a vocation to the priesthood or religious life, especially Brooks Jensen and Dennis Demeza. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For all who need our prayers, especially the sick, those who care for them, those who serve our country and community, and all the intentions for which we have been asked to pray, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For all who have died, that they may enjoy the kingdom prepared for them, especially Robert Delcolo and Mary Pastuska, Pastuska for whom this holy mass is offered, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. And we ask all of these prayers through Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen.
Pray, my brothers and sisters, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. May this oblation dedicated to your name purify us, O Lord, and day by day bring our conduct closer to the life of heaven through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us now give thanks to the Lord our God. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere, to give you thanks, Lord, Holy Father, almighty and eternal God. For you laid the foundations of the world and have arranged the changing of times and seasons. You formed us in your own divine image and set humanity over the whole world in all its wonder, to rule in your name over all that you have created, and forever to praise you in your mighty works through Christ our Lord. And so with all the angels and saints, we praise you and in joyful celebration, we acclaim. You are indeed holy, O Lord, the font of all holiness. Make holy, therefore, these gifts, we pray, by sending down your Spirit upon them like the dewfall, so that they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. At the time he was betrayed and entered willingly into his passion, he took bread and, giving thanks, broke it, gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice and once more giving thanks, he gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The Mystery of Faith. Therefore, as we celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection, we offer you, Lord, the bread of life and the chalice of salvation, giving thanks that you have held us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly we pray that partaking of the body and blood of Christ, we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your church spread throughout the world and bring her to the fullness of charity together with Francis, our Pope, William, our Bishop, and all the clergy. Remember also our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection and all who have died in your mercy. Welcome them into the light of your face. Have mercy on us all, we pray, that with the Blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, Blessed Joseph, her spouse, 
the blessed apostles, with Elizabeth, Benedict, Scholastica, Carlo Acutis, John Paul II, and all the saints who have pleased you throughout the ages, that we may merit to be co-heirs to eternal life and may praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him and with him and in him, O God, almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. At the Savior's command and formed by divine teaching, we dare to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil and graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours now and forever. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. And with your spirit. Let us offer each other a sign of peace. Behold the Lamb of God. Behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word and my soul shall be.
please join in singing number 334, O Sacrament Most Holy, number 334. Let us pray. Grant, we pray, O Lord, that having been replenished by such great gifts, we may gain the prize of salvation and never cease to praise you through Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. So Deacon Ken said it is 1045, so you weren't the shortest mass of the weekend, but 15 minutes off of that is pretty good, right? So we've given you a great gift and we'll try to keep that going through the summer. Ben likes that. <laughs> so I wanna ask you to do a favor for Bishop Koenig. We have been going through the Faith and Charity Annual Catholic Appeal, which the bishops do every year. We are just about $1,800 short of our 52,000 goal. $1,800 is all we need to give the bishop what he has asked of us. There are envelopes on the back pews there. Just any small donation from anyone who hasn't given yet will help show him that St. Elizabeth is behind him and to support his ministries as well as our own to remember that we do belong to the Diocese of Wilmington. So thank you for your goodness thus far and we know that we will be able to, to make this. And so my dear friends, the Lord be with you and with your spirit. May Almighty God bless you, the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. Go in peace, glorifying the Lord by your life.
Thanks be to God. Please join in singing our closing hymn, number 481, Love Divine, All Loves Excelling, number 481. Thank you. 